Rise and shine, mothers and brothers, and cheese wedges and chin straps and handlebars all over the world. Good morning to you, Saturday morning, the last day of my week. Wearing a maroon shirt that cost me about $2.50, and a tie that has guys in tuxedos smoking cigars, and the gray pinstripe suspenders. I'm stylish but I'm not fashionable. I could care less about what's in fashion. I wear what's comfortable for me, and I try not to match too much. I like mixing, contrasting colors and textures, matching, uh, let me put it this way, coordination of my clothing is not a priority, and it it's just my own way of doing things. In the same way that your beard is your way of doing things. Every beard is beautiful. Every beard is beautiful. Cheese wedges are beautiful. Chin straps, you know. Everything except glitter beards. No glitter beards. What's interesting is, with the whole bearded world, guys come to me to get lined up. I'll be honest with you, I'm not your lineup guy. I can do it. I don't prefer it. I like to stick with my strengths, and my strengths are working with big beards. They always have been. If you come to me to get lined up, there is a possibility you will be disappointed. If you come to me for a short face, facial hair beard, you know, like a shadow kind of beard, um, like a lot of the black guys have, or Hispanic guys, or the like white urban guys that like the chin strap things, I just, I'm not, the reason why I don't do it is because I'm not great at it. I know people that are so much better at it, so much. But if you are a big beard guy, if you got a beard that's two inches beyond your bottom lip, there's a good possibility that I might be your guy. But I will tell you right now, short beards are not my thing, are not my thing. And people sitting in my chair and micromanaging every snip of my scissors and comb and that ain't gonna work out too well. So, as an artist, my favorite kind of client shows me a picture of what they want, or they say, do your magic, man, and I do. That's what I do. Anyways, I wanna talk to you about a couple things today, real quick. I want you to be able to learn from your past and prepare for your future. Now think about this to learn from the past. Now believe me, I made every mistake you can imagine. Every mistake you can imagine. I jokingly say, I've made the mistakes so you don't have to. Listen, I'm an old guy with gray hair that made bad decisions when he was younger. And I am living with the scars and I walk with a limp as a result of bad decisions and that limp is also psychological and mental and emotional there's things that I will never recover from I will try my hardest and I'm doing great at it but I will tell you this the decisions you make now are all about your future it's like planting a tree now which will bear fruit later so let's talk about this to learn from your past if you've made bad decisions Ask yourself, what did I do? What was the bad decision? Number two, uh, ask yourself, what did I learn from it? If you didn't learn anything from it, guess what's gonna happen? You're bound to repeat it. It's gonna happen over and over and over again. And three, now let me ask you this. This is the, this is the differentiator between people. There's a lot of people who know what they did. There's a lot of people who might learn from it, but here's the differentiator. This is the thing that makes you different than the other people who've made the same mistake. Ask yourself this, what would I do differently now? That's the key. What would you do differently now? Okay. Most people's mistakes. When I, I'm closer to 60 than I am to 50. If I did the rocking chair test right now, I can look back and my two biggest mistakes or areas of mistakes were women and money. 
and my lord, they are not minor things. They can affect your life forever. Women and money. And many times those two things are connected. Huge mistakes. And I'm still learning and paying the price and will continue to pay the price. That's just, that's just life. I'm a Christian guy. A lot of Christian people want to pray and make things go away. It doesn't work that way. You make your bed, you got to sleep in it. Jesus doesn't take away your problems just because all of a sudden now you're coming to him. He might give you the strength. You know, they, they used to say, uh, some people say, Lord, take this weight off my back. And then there's a kind of person that says, Lord, give me a stronger back. I think that's how God works. He gives you a stronger back. He doesn't like wave a magic wand and make everything go away. All right. To learn from the past, you must ask, what did I do? What did I learn from it? And what would I do differently now? Holy cow. I can't believe I would act, I act so differently now. You ever, have you ever seen the meme where uh, it shows like a guy walking up to a girl and the, the guy says, you look like a real bad decision, get over here. <laughs> and I laugh at that because I look at so many bad decisions in my lifetime, I won't go near them now. There's certain certain things in my life that I did that caused me so much pain and distress, I won't go within 10 miles of them, all right? Now, to prepare for the future, we are learning from the past. Now, to prepare for the future. What would a positive future look like for you? Imagine it, describe it, write it down. I'm telling you, get that pad of paper and a pencil and write it down. What does a positive future look like for you? Is it sitting at your kitchen table in the morning looking out on uh, in the woods or looking out at an ocean or a lake or a pond? Or is it looking out over a, a city skyline? You're living on the 33rd floor of a high rise. What does your future, describe it. Sit down with somebody and describe what your future looks like. If you have nobody in your life to describe it to, put it down here. Put it in the comment what, what your future looks like. What does your positive future look like from the minute you wake up to the minute you go to sleep? Question number two, what are your plans to make it happen? Uh, well, I'm just wishing and hoping. I'm playing the lottery. Um, uh, I'm just bitching and moaning all day long. I really have no plans. Okay. Can you see now where the Mount Olympus exercise comes in handy and the power of focus? Can you see that? Now it's starting to relate. Number one was, what does your positive future look like? Number two, what are your plans to make it happen? Now the third, clincher. This is the differentiator. This is what makes it, this is what makes everything different than everyone else in your category right now. What are you doing today to make that happen? Let me, let me ask you again, what are you doing today to make it happen? Well, you're listening to George Bruno, also known as the Sultan of Silver on Instagram, at George A. Bruno. You're watching me. You're listening to me talk about beards and slipping in a little bit of motivational stuff. You're watching me talk about handlebar mustaches, but showing you that you're capable of so much more. You're watching me how to teach you how to load a straight razor on a shavette, but also what I'm slipping in there is little bits of wisdom and things that I've learned over my more than a half century of life on this earth. That's the, that's the first step. You have to know that there's something, you have to know that there's something beyond the wardrobe. Are you guys into C.S. Lewis, my favorite author of all time? C.S. Lewis, The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe. To know that there's something beyond the wardrobe, that's where you need to get to. And don't doubt that there's something beyond the wardrobe. When you part the old clothing, what is there? That's what I'm challenging you to do today. I'm not gonna talk to you real long on the entire ride to work today. Oh, the other thing I did was, uh, listen, just keep that in mind. Write, write those questions down, please. Rewind this, go back and watch this video a dozen times and write those things down on a three by five card. Stick them on your 
on your uh, bathroom mirror, put them on your refrigerator, put them on the dashboard of your car, put it on a three by five card, fold it in half and stick it in your pocket and look at it every hour and answer those questions out loud. People are gonna think you're crazy and you're talking to yourself, that's okay. They already think you're nuts because you have a big beard. Other thing, I, I was using uh, Kiehl's beard oil. Kiehl's, K-I-E-H-L-S. Not a bad oil, it was given to me for free. The, uh, the main oil, apart from the essential oils that give it the fragrance, the main oil is Prakashi oil. And I bought some Prakashi oil. That's Prakashi oil, can you see that? That's Prakashi oil. I have four ounces of it right here. I put it in the beard today. Now it's a rainy, humid day. I didn't, I didn't, all I did was dry and just brush my beard. It's not unplugged. It is a little wispy right now, but I will style it when I get to work today in my spare time, if there is any spare time on a Saturday. And um, I think I used too much oil already. I, I mean, it's slick, it's, it's slippery, it's beautiful, it's soft. I think I might have used too much oil. Uh, tomorrow I'll I'll back it off by about 50%, or probably transfer it to a uh, European dropper bottle or an eyedropper, so I can more accurately uh, uh, evaluate the oil. So I'm going to try it for a week. There's a several other rainforest oils that I'm trying to see if they are ultra emollient and see what they're absorbent uh, quality is if they if they absorb quickly or if they feel greasy throughout the day so I just put this on about 10 minutes ago what's gonna happen is I'll wear it all day I'll probably brush a couple times I will handle bar most likely uh, naturally with a blow dryer and what else so we'll see how it goes at the end of the day I'm gonna feel the beard and just see see what the quality is. It might just end up being an oil that I blend with other oils. I don't know. Sometimes, like for instance, Moroccan oil can be used by itself. It's from the Argan tree. So some people call it Moroccan oil because it's from Morocco, or they call it Argan oil, A-R-G-A-N. And that is super, super uh, ultra emollient. It soaks in quick, man. You put a little bit of Argan oil on your skin, literally five minutes later, you can't feel it. Whereas, whereas olive oil, you put that on and you're greasy all day long. I don't mind olive oil in colder weather. So I'll let you know what I think of the Prakashi oil um, in other broadcasts. I had a uh, skin cancer check. My first one ever. Two thumbs up, baby. Clean and clear. So it happens when you take care of yourself. But then again, too, I have olive skin. I tend to handle the sun better than most people that I know. I, the sun doesn't bother me. I think I've gotten sunburned maybe three times in my life. So my skin loves the sun. But you need to take care of your skin. And the reason why is this, is that hair grows out of skin. Healthy skin will create healthy hair. So whatever is a good skin regimen is gonna be a great beard regimen. Okay, keep that in mind. All right, that's it. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go now. Uh, I'll, I might do a ride home end of the week kind of thing. I hope you have a fantastic day today, and uh, I I try to upload these videos <clears throat> at work, but the Wi-Fi there and the uh, cellular the cell that I'm in really blows. It just it's horrible. So a lot of times you'll get my morning rise and shine at night because I get home and I will upload it to YouTube on my Wi-Fi at home, which is really fast. Boom, just goes right up. But at work, darn thing's loading for like three hours and I just, I, you know, and then phone calls are coming in and, and it just interrupts everything. So I have to figure out a new way of doing things. I'm not investing in cameras. I'm not investing in anything. This is my cell phone that I'm recording on and it's going to stay that way. I kind of like the low-tech, lo-fi nature of what I do, but it's high heart content, man. So you go out, you be the best you can be. I don't care who you are. You're not too fat. You're not too skinny. You're not too ugly. Oh, I was thinking about this today. This is funny. Um, a beard makes an ugly guy good looking. It makes a good looking guy better looking.
think about that. It really does add to your appearance. I honestly believe that. Go out there and kill it today. Have confidence, write those questions down. How to learn from your past and how to plan for your future. That's so important. Without proper planning, without goals, somebody else will always run your life. Did you hear me? Without goals and plans, somebody else is gonna run your life. And you don't wanna leave that up to the roll of the dice and you don't wanna leave that up to the users because there's always people that will use you to reach their goals. And there's a difference between getting used and, and people cooperating and the uh, cooperation and I don't know what, what the word would be. Cooperation is the only thing that comes to mind. You help them, they help you, one hand washes the other. But there are people who will only use others to get what they want. You're not one of those people that gets used because you watch this channel and you're empowered every single time that you step away from these videos. You laugh a little bit, you get informed a little bit, you get empowered a lot. And that's my goal. You're awesome, man, and don't you damn forget it. George Bruno, at George A. Bruno on Instagram. GeorgeBruno.com is the website. Twitter and Periscope, at George Bruno. Gray Bailey on YouTube. Write these things down. I will eventually put links up. Subscribe to the channel, like this video, forward it to people who you think would benefit from it. You're awesome. I'll see you soon. Bye.